so good to be here in the house of God.
find you? What lane did he have to go to get you? I know I can remember when I had strayed and the Lord was that, that ever relentless love is just there and, and he found me. I just want you to take a moment and think about God's love and where he picked you out, out of, what he rescued you from, how he's changed your life completely around. And that's one place we don't want to go back to. It's like the dog going back to the vomit, the Bible says. And we don't want to do that. Father, we want to stay in your presence, Father God. Because nothing else matters, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord.
Yes. 
thanking you and praising you for being that good father a perfect father oh God father we honor you this morning because you're the father of all fathers so father I pray that you have your way in this service this morning fathers many of us our fathers aren't here right now oh God our physical fathers have passed on or some of them 
may have never been in our lives and some have been missing but Father He said you never leave us nor forsake us and you're here this morning Father and we praise you and we thank you in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen and Amen let's give the Lord a hand clap this morning thank you worship team Man, I, I don't even know Spanish, but I asked them to sing it in Spanish, and it just, it just broke me. I don't care what language you sing that in. He's a good father. He's a perfect father. Good morning, church, and happy Father's Day to all you fathers out there. Whew. God's really put something on my heart this morning. Let me gather myself here. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians uh, chapter 6, verse 18. That's the text I'll be using this morning. And the Word of God says this. And I will be a father to you, and you will be my sons and daughters, says the Lord Almighty. This morning... This message will be about our Father in heaven and how important it is to have a right relationship with Him. Imagine a relationship with a perfect Father. There's many here this morning that have had bad relationships with their fathers. Abandonment. Rejection. Hurt by, lied to. And some of you have never even known your father. A lot of us grew up in a generation where our parents were in addiction. And some of you know that although your dad's not perfect, my kids, he's doing his best. Your dad is or was a good father, and whether he is still present in your life or death has taken him from you, his blessings are a big part of who you've become. But unfortunately, this morning, there are very few dads that are like this in the world. On this Father Days, I want to be able to introduce you to the perfect Father, our Father in heaven, and how you can have a right relationship with Him. How many here this morning remember how the atmosphere would change in a heartbeat when dad showed up. Even though mom was a real superhero and she was the one taking you to your friends, she was the one taking you to every event and she took you to every school play. She was at every game. She was always there. She took you to the dentist, to the doctor, to every birthday party. Mom was there. Man, but when dad showed up, the atmosphere changed. Man, you went crazy. He said, Dad, look at me. You couldn't wait to show him what you had learned that day, whether it was catching a ball or doing a dance or showing him how high you can jump or singing a new song. It was all about Dad. Daddy, watch me. Daddy, watch me. What was going on in that moment? Was it that you wanted so desperately for your dad to look your way. You wanted him to validate your new skills. You wanted him to acknowledge how special you were to him. You wanted him to celebrate with you. You wanted him to encourage you and to to cheer you on. Most of the time, you just wanted your father to notice you. Get an amen? You wanted him to look your way and say, I see you. You wanted him to be there for you. And I'm in no way implying that mom's opinion doesn't matter or that her approval wasn't important. This message is not intended to to discount the amazing and irreplaceable roles that moms play in our lives. Amen? Their blessing is essential and there's no way we can flourish in life without our moms. Thank God for my mom. It's just that there's 
There is something different and special about your dad and what your dad thinks about you. You see, a father's blessing is what we all long for in our lives. It's a void that we have in our lives that only he can fill. A father's approval, a father's affection, a father's attention. We all want to hear our daddy say, I love you, and I'm so proud of you. Maybe you've been fortunate enough to to have those blessings in your life, or maybe it wasn't there. The blessing was there for a while, but then you sensed it began to slip away. Maybe the approval was never there in quite the way you wanted it to be. You always felt it was based on your performance or that it was, and it was never unconditional to get your father's blessing. You see, the longing for father's affection and approval, it is intimate and it is universal. A lot of us didn't always get what we were so desperate for from the man who brought us into this world. I remember as a little boy growing up, I craved my dad's attention and approval. And I I wanted so badly to hear him say, great job, good catch, great idea, good shot. You're getting so much better. You can be whatever you want to be because you're so good at whatever you do. Son, I'm proud of you. Perhaps as a little girl, your daddy You wanted your daddy to say, that's incredible, baby girl. Or I see you, princess, do it again. You know, even as we grow older, we are still longing for his attention and his approval. It is still there. Every one of us is desperate for the approval of our father, no matter what age you are. Growing up, I knew my dad loved me, even though he never told me. My dad showed his love through his provision for his family. You see, but I didn't want provision. I wanted his approval. I wanted his attention. And for him to tell me he loved me, I hungered for that. Am I the only one this morning? I don't blame my dad. He did the best he could as a father without a guide or a manual. You know, but he finally did tell me that he was proud of me and that he loved me. But unfortunately, it was on his deathbed after receiving Christ as Savior and God had changed his heart and when he said that I felt like a hundred pounds had been lifted from my shoulders and that day I felt free I I felt accomplished I felt complete in in this magazine uh, psychology today I want to quote something that Dr. Peggy Drexler wrote she said this In my research into the lives of some 75 achieving, clearly independent women, I knew that I would find powerful connections between them and the first men in their lives. What surprised me was how deep the bond is, how powerful it remains throughout their lives, and how resilient it can be even when a father has caused its grievous harm. No matter how successful their careers how happy their marriages are, how fulfilling their lives. Women told me that their happiness passed through a filter of their father's reaction. Many told me they tried to remove the filter and much to their surprise failed. We know that fathers play a key role in the development and choice, choices of their daughters. But even for women whose fathers had been neglectful or abusive, I found a hunger for approval. They wanted a warm relationship with men who do not deserve any relationship at all. Mm, Powerful. Thank you, son. And when I read that, the phrase hunger for approval stood out to me because without approval, we can feel like we've been given up on. We can feel abandoned. We can feel devastated. We can even feel disowned. We can feel ignored, isolated, and judged. 
There is this thirst that we cannot quench on our own. There is this hole we cannot fill no matter how hard we try. Nor does it matter how much we've accomplished, the hole is still there. The void can only be filled by our Father's presence and approval. It is the missing piece we cannot find. When that approval is not there, we feel forsaken, which means to be left behind. It means when we really needed that person, that person was not there. This morning, I'm here to let you know that our Father in heaven is not going on without you. He's not walking out on you, nor is he trying to inflict pain on you. Hebrews 14, 13, 4 says that he will never leave us nor forsake us. He won't leave us helpless. He won't let you down. He won't abandon you. He won't desert you. He will not run away from you. He's not our earthly father who seemed to care more about something more than us or what was best for us. Even mentioning this need for a father's approval might be a problem for some of you. It might be striking a nerve. It might be taking you somewhere you did not want to go this morning. But I'm here to tell you this morning that God wants to heal you. On the other hand, there are some of you in here that have had great fathers and you know what it's like to live in the blessings of your father and in your father's love. Praise the Lord. If that's the case, then celebrate in this this morning on Father's Day and be grateful. Be grateful for it, but please continue to pay attention because there is even a greater reward waiting for you when you discover what it means to be to be a loved son or a loved daughter of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I would say that many of you here this morning have never known the blessings or the earthly bless full blessings of your earthly father. What's even worse Some of you are stuck with the fact that that possibly of never hearing your dad say, I love you and I'm proud of you. It's gone, washed away by death or distance or a lost father. The blessing that you long for has turned into pain, even abandonment. This This is reality and there's little or nothing you can do to it to change it. Maybe you feel like it's just too late. All of us have have had different experiences with our dads, but I know there is one thing that unites us, and that is something that God has put in each of us, every one of us, the need for love, the need to be treasured, noticed, and accepted by our Father. We can be defiant and say it doesn't matter. We can try and dismiss it, ignore it, but the craving is still there. We need it. We are incomplete without it. Or our lives will move on, but that need for daddy's approval will always be there. So you might be thinking, how is this going to happen? How can this happen if my father's not even in my life or in, or in this world? How is this need for daddy's approval? How is it going to be met? These are all good questions and many I had to ask myself. So stay with me here. And follow my chain of thought. In Jeremiah 29, 11, the Lord says, For I know the plans I have for you, saith the Lord. Declares the Lord plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. You see, God has wired each of us with unique abilities, giftings, and desires. We all have these created giftings designed just for us to serve His purpose To bring him glory. There is nothing more satisfying than walking in your core purpose in life. This unique gift that he tailored just for you and I. It helps us to bring glory to our father. Giving our lives very specific meaning. And giving us direction. His plans for you are not just to exist. It goes way beyond than just having a job, a career, or a business that you don't even like or are good at. Our Father in heaven 
has put into your hearts a gift and a dream so that you can have a meaningful pursuit that makes your heart come alive and helps others come alive. You see, God put a purpose and he put a gift in my life. When I got saved, he gave me a new heart and a new life. And he became my father in heaven. And when I began to walk in his will and doing what he wanted to me, I felt that wholeness. I felt that peace that I had a father in heaven who was proud of me, who loved me, who cared for me. And no matter what I did, he loved me unconditionally. See, that father in heaven became part of me. And that's who I serve this day. He's given me a calling and a purpose that I walk, I walk in relentlessly. I'm preaching right now, and that's why I preach with so much emotion and so much love, because this isn't me. This is something that God has put within me. He's given me a calling to be the second man here at this church, and that's a, that, that's a calling, to be an associate pastor. And I love my position here, to come alongside and to assist Pastor Alex, counseling marriages, running the men's home, Helping people in crisis. I love to walk in those things. And when I walk in those things, I feel that fulfillment that only the Father can give us. The promise is that no matter these things, no matter what these things are with your earthly father, you have a perfect father in heaven. Are you hearing me this morning who loves you and wants to pour out his blessings upon you? Turn with me to Psalms 27.10. The word of God reads, even if my father and mother forsake me, the Lord will take me up. It's a promise from God. The Lord will take me up. Even if the blessings of our earthly father have let us down, the love of our heavenly father can still find us. That's amazing. Even if our dad is, is dead or gone, our father, our father God can still hold us and lift us up. It can't stop us from having an intimate relationship with our Father in heaven. Even if we've been wounded by our dad, God can restore us and raise us up to be healed and to be whole. Our Father in heaven is not like our earthly father. I can guarantee you, you won't be forsaken by God. If you were wounded by your dad, then you can remember places and times you were forsaken by him. You were abandoned, knocked down, lied to, hurt, rejected, devalued, ignored. Or he tried to hold you to a standard that no one could meet. Remembering these times, it's difficult. But I'm here to tell you this morning that God's promise is available to you. The Lord will take me up. God is a, is a father. He, he's not the same as your earthly father. His heart is good. His heart is pure. His love is unconditional. And His arms are strong. This morning, I'm here to tell you our Father in Heaven loves you. And even though your story may be that of betrayal, disappointment, and defeat, the God of Heaven is here for you. He made you. He sees you. He wants you to know the joy of being a child of God and having the most excellent Father possible. He himself wants to be your father. He wants to shower you with his blessings. He wants to raise you up. He wants to show you the ropes. He wants to help you grow strong, cheer you on as you pursue your God-given passion. He wants to put a safety net of love underneath you so that you can spread your wings and so you can, you can take flight without fear of failure from holding you down. It may not be the same as having your own dad or seeing your father change from the kind of father he once was. The blessing God wants to give you goes way beyond. Hear me now, goes way beyond any human relationship. The best possible earthly father cannot bless you or compare to the smile of your heavenly father. Mm. You see, your heavenly father loves it's supernatural, it's powerful, it's unending, and it's unconditional. 
His love means this for us. His love means that no one will be left behind. His love means that no one will be orphaned and no one will go unwanted. His love means that no one's story will end with abuse and betrayal. His love means that no one will have to live without a father's love. No one ever. That's the father in heaven that we serve. You see, many of us have been hurt. Been hurt by the church, by a pastor, by our own fathers. This morning, the Lord wants to heal you of your bad experience. He wants to begin to heal the hurt and make your heart live again. God wants to bring you to a place where you believe and, and you receive that what he says is true. Hear me now. What God says is true. He's talking about you as a son or a daughter of the Most High. He wants you to live fearless and free. God is always poised and he's always ready for you to take that step forward to, to him. You need to give him the chance by taking a baby step toward God, your father, in faith. God's always willing. He's always waiting for us. You know, this reminds me of growing up and going swimming and being in the pool or some of us, the canal. It reminds us of when uh, your child, or I remember my, my son, you know, I'd be in the pool and I'd say, jump, jump. And he didn't know how to swim yet. He was just little and your ch he, he, he would have to overcome that fear to jump into father's hands. Are you hearing me this morning? Then he, once he did it, your child, he would get out and he'd run to the edge of the pool again and he would back, and you would back up a little farther into, into, the, into the pool. And, and once again, you encourage your child, jump. Then your child would, would jump and you would catch him. And once again, he would overcome fear and jump into your arms. Each time your child would, would trust you more and more because he knew that your heart was good. Your child knew that his, your arms were strong. And it's the same thing this morning with your heavenly Father in heaven. He wants you to take that jump and surrender fully to Him. You can trust Him. You see, there's going to be that moment of fear, that, that moment before you jump, but when your Father catches you, hear me now, when your Father catches you, there's going to be a lot of laughter and joy once you're in your Father's hands. Woo, man. Thank you, Lord. You're going to have to, to let go, hear me. You're going to have to let go to whatever you're using to cope with the absence of your father's blessings. See, some of y'all, you're, you're, you're coping. You're just making do because you haven't fully committed to the, your father. Yeah, you're successful. Yeah, you got everything you need. But you're missing your father's blessing. But after you take that little jump, you'll find your heart laughing in the arms of a father who is offering his best blessing, the best blessing you could ever know. You see, knowing God intimately as a perfect father that you can love and trust and lean on is possible. I guarantee that it will change your life. It'll change the way you read the word of God. It'll change your perspective when you pray to our Father. Oh, if only you knew. And some of you probably do, but my message this morning is to, is to get you to make that connection. But in order to receive our Heavenly Father's blessing, you must realize that the most important thing about you, it's not from where you're from. It's not about what people think about you. It's not about what you think about yourself. It's not what kind of family you're from or your gifts or, or what your abilities are. It's not about what you've overcome or what you've been through. It's not about what you own or what you have accomplished. It's not about your looks, your smarts, or how many friends you have. You know what the most important thing is about you? Is what you think when you think about God. Hmm. 
what you think when you think about God. When you think about this statement, there is nothing about you that matters more than what you think about God. This is the most essential and defining thing about you. Your eternity is based on what you believe about God. The theologian and pastor A.W. Tozer said it this way, what comes into our minds when we think about God is the most important thing about us. Woo, that's heavy. Turn with me to Colossians 1.16 because it's biblical. It says, for by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authority, all things were created by him and for him. First point here, you were made by God. He is your source of origin. You didn't make yourself. You didn't just happen. And since God made you, you are incredibly important. You are valuable and prized because God created you. Second, you were made for God. That's your central purpose on this earth now and into eternity. When God made you, he just didn't throw you down like a rock from space and wave goodbye, never wanting to have anything to do with you again. He has a purpose for you. The very reason he made you was so he could connect with you in a relationship. Wow. So simple. You see, this is hardwired into our, our DNA. This is what enables us to connect with God because you're wired for that purpose. That's that emotions. That's that when you were weeping, when I was weeping during that song, it, it's that connection I have with my father. It's, it's wired inside each and every one of you. We were made by God and for God. Our heart searches for God. When the God that we were made by, our soul longs for him and wants to respond to him. This is that something that draws us toward God. We're like a magnet being drawn toward our Father, toward our God. The problem is a lot of people, they fight this draw. They try and ignore it. They try to ignore that pull. They push the idea of God out of mind, out of sight. They pretend that that draw does not exist. The force that pulls us toward God is built into your soul. This, that is the way we were designed. That's why even some of you right now, hear me, some of you right now are sensing a pull from God. It's the DNA. Turn with me to Acts chapter 17, 26, 27. And it says this. From one man made every nation of men that they should inhabit the whole earth. And he determined the time set for them and the exact places where they should live. God did this so that men would seek him and perhaps reach out for him and find him. The same idea. As we were made by God and for God, and because of this, we are constantly being drawn toward God. So I ask you, what image do you have of God? Who is drawing you this morning? I tell you what, what he's not. I'll tell you what God is not. He's not a grandpa God. He's not a grumpy old man who's, who's been around forever who's not up to date with technology. He probably thinking he doesn't have the new phones or he, he, he probably needs a large font to read. That's not who God is. You might think he's, he's too old to keep up with, a, with you or understand you. I tell you what he's not also. He's not a scorekeeper. God is not an umpire in the sky, sky making rules and checking to see if you're naughty or nice. He's not an angry God who's thinking who he might punish next. 
If that were the case, nobody would be here to worship him. He's not a hipster God who wants you to live like the world but be a Bible scholar. He's not a buddy God who is a buddy God who is at your level and you acknowledge him with a high five and what's up, bro? He's not a buffet God where you pick and choose on how to believe in him or serve him. Ouch. He's not a me God. In other words, I'm God. I act like it and think like it. I call the shots. Everything is about me, me, me. I'm in charge. I make all the decisions. I'm in control. I'm self-made. The world revolves around me. Nobody tells me what to do. Woo. Somebody say amen or ouch. You see, all of these views of God are how I view God at one time. Your views might, not be, might be completely different than how you view God. The question remains, though, what do you think about when you think about God? What do you think about when you think about God? The good news this morning is that God is just not sitting around waiting for you to have this conversation with you. That's the good news. God wants you to know who he is. He's not hiding like a needle in a haystack saying, good luck, find me, figure me out, figure out who I am. He's not hiding in a Bible college or in some deep theological book. Matter of fact, it's quite the opposite. God has surrounded you with with his fingerprints of creation. He has overcome everything man has put before you to show you who he is, what he's like, more than what you want to find, more than what you want to find, God wants you, God wants to find you. He wants you to find him. See, there's a connection trying to happen. On some of it, it's our part, not wanting to seek him, not wanting to find him when he's right in front of us everywhere. Sometimes God allows things to happen to get your attention. Right? Some things happen and that connection happens and you thank God, God shouldn't have made that one. Why am I still alive? He wants you to know him and know how much he loves you. It's only through your faith in Christ we can find the Father we have longing for all of us all along. Only by our faith in Christ. Because God wanted us to have a clear picture of what he is like, he said his son Jesus. 2 Corinthians 4, 6. For God who said, let the light shine out of darkness, may his light shine out of darkness, made his light shine into our hearts to give us the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Christ. We see God through Jesus Christ. There's two powerful truths here. God has given us the light of knowledge and of his glory. The, and, and the knowledge of God's glory is found in the face of Christ. You see, the scriptures record record Jesus' life so that we can know what he did, what he stood for, and what he came to offer this world. But also, we can know what a glorious God looks like. Are you following me this morning? Because Jesus paints a picture who who God is for all of us to see and understand so that we can respond to God in the correct way. A loving God, unconditional love that sent his son for you and I. A God of mercy, a God of grace, a God of forgiveness. That's the picture that Jesus is painting for us through his life. Jesus teaches us so much about God that he's all powerful, all knowing, ever present, never changing. Holy, ruler of all things, greater than all things. Loving, saving, generous, compassionate. It's so much more. The greatest thing that Jesus teaches us about God, and it's a truth that can set you free and allow you to become everything that God has created you to be, the number one image of God that Jesus paints 
for us is that God is a father. He is our perfect father. He is Abba Father. He is our daddy. Out of all the things that Jesus teaches us about God, the biggest thing he is trying to get across to us is that God is a father. God wants you to know him, and he invites you to call him father. He wants you to know you can live as a loved son and a loved daughter. The apostle Paul understood this in Ephesians 1.17 and 118. He says this, he says, this I keep asking. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious God, the perfect God, the perfect Father, the glorious Father, may give you the spirit of wisdom and revelation so that you may know Him better. I pray the eyes of your heart might be enlightened. Even Paul understood that. The number one image of God that Jesus draws for us time and time again. It's not that he is the king of kings, not that he is the ruler of the universe, not that he's the alpha and omega, not that he's the rock, not that he's a God of hope and eternal life, not that God is immortal, invincible, not that he's a creator of heavens and earth, not that he's a great I am, He's not that he's a wonderful counselor, a mighty God, prince of peace, not that he's the logos and the word that became flesh and dwelt among us, not even that God is love. God is, is not one of these things alone. He is all of these things and much more. But hear me now. But the number one image that 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 number one image from God that Jesus draws for you and I time and time again is that God is a father and that he's a perfect father. In John 14, 6, it says, make it very clear in what it means to live in a relationship with the father. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the father except through me. Once again, in John 14, 9, he says, Don't you know anyone who sees me has seen the Father? Mm. 189 times in the four Gospels alone, Jesus referred to God as a Father. Jesus used the word Father more than any other term, distinction, or characteristic of God. He used the word Father. Even in his last breath, while hanging on the cross, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. What a relationship. So what do you think about when you think about God? My hope this morning is that you begin to embrace and begin to relate to the Almighty One and come to see God as a heavenly Father. And let me end with this. We see the way that Jesus relates with his father. But how about the father to the son? In Matthew 3, Jesus comes to John the Baptist to be baptized. They have a discussion about John can't baptizing, and they decide Jesus is going to get baptized. So John plunges Jesus into the Jordan River, brings him up again. Jesus is baptized For what? To identify with sinners in their redemption. They're new and they're clean. This this is a public declaration of their faith. Follow me. Jesus comes up out of the water. The heavens open. The Holy Spirit descends like a dove. And it alights on Jesus. And a voice from heaven gives a startling announcement. Do you know what that announcement was? The crowd, the whole crowd was there knew already that this was a 30-year-old man, Jesus of Nazareth, son of Joseph, a carpenter's son. Jesus was from the village down the road. The crowd remembered Jesus growing up as a little boy, playing in the streets, going to the synagogue, going to the marketplace. But now he was fully grown and being baptized by John. God the Father goes on record in public, speaking in an audible voice at a baptism service. What did God say? This is my son in whom I love, and with him I am well pleased. Woo! Something this man wanted all his life. 
Something that we all need to hear. He is saying, I'm God, that's my kid, I love him a lot and I'm pleased with him. You would think if God was going to call down from heaven, he would give this great theological sermon. Nope, he said, what every son and daughter wanted to hear, I love you and I am pleased with you, I'm proud of you. Let that soak in your mind for a little bit. Those very words that we all want to hear. That day at the Jordan River, God showed that his relationship with Jesus wasn't a contract. Hear me now. It wasn't a list of principles to, to agree with, with a bunch of rules to follow. That's not the father that we serve. You see, it was a connection. It was a connection. It was a family connection. It was real, heart-to-heart, life connection with the Creator in the universe as He acknowledges His Son. Yes, God is all-knowing, all-powerful, all-wise. Yes, He is holy, just, and perfect. And there is a just wrath awaiting those who reject Him. But this morning, Jesus wants you to know the most important fact about God, that God is a loving Father. And wants to connect with you. It's very clear that God the Father has shown us what an amazing relationship with the Son whom He dearly loves. And as everybody stands this morning, as the worship team makes their, their way up here, This morning, as you stand, I can I ask that you bow your heads and close your, eye, close your eyes? This is a very intimate moment. God is a loving Father. And this morning, He wants to connect with you. nothing like that relationship there's nothing like walking in your father's blessing and doing his will and doing his purpose and it's there for you it's there it's all you have to do is be like that baby and jump to the father take that baby step and allow our father in heaven to embrace you and to hold you once again and to secure you He loves you. This morning there might be a few of you that need to reconnect with your Father in heaven. And there's some that don't know what this preacher's talking about. I'm here to tell you that your relationship with Jesus Christ will make you anew. Will give you a Father in heaven to relate to. Would you pray with with me this morning? Repeat after me, say, our our Father who art in heaven, we come to you in the name of Jesus. I ask that you forgive me, Father, for all my sins. Come into my heart, Jesus. Make me new. Father, I want to reconnect with you this morning. I want your image in my mind to be everything that life is about. I want to rest secured in your arms. I want to be able to cry out at any time, Abba, Father. Father, I pray this in Jesus' name. This morning, you guys, uh, I handed out this here. Could you all put this in your hands? If if, if you don't have one, raise up your hand and an usher will get you one. Did you guys get one? Okay. What we're going to do this morning, we're going to make a declaration. We're going to make a declaration to our Father. 
And I want you to repeat after me. It says, I declare that I am a child of the King. My Father is the creator of this universe. He is the Alpha and the Omega. He has no beginning and He has no end. He is eternal. He is the great I Am. He is always present. He is all-powerful. He is all-knowing and never changes. He will never leave me nor forsake me. He has given me the rights to be His child through His Son, Jesus Christ. I have been uniquely designed, wonderfully created, and dearly loved. I am a child of a perfect father. And then on the bottom there, there's room for your signature. Sign that. Put it in a frame and put it somewhere to remind you of the father in heaven that you have who loves you. Woo, glory. Let's be excited. Happy Father's Day.